Hey everyone, it's Froggy, and I'm back again with another episode of Will a Wonderful World. So, we've got a little cutscene here. <laughs> you ask me, you ask me how deeply I love you. What on earth are you doing? I'm singing. Hmm, I didn't know you sing. What is the name of the song? The moon represents my heart. Hmm, how does she still know the song? I thought I had. What are you mumbling about? <laughs> I mean, of course. This song, everyone in China knows this song. Why are you suddenly in the mood to sing? When I had read Alicia's story about her singing all of a sudden, a lot of music just popped into my head out of nowhere. So I was thinking. Maybe I was a singer before I died. Before... before you died? I've heard stories of how some people become gods when they die and... with unfulfilled wishes. That must be why I know these songs, right? Aren't those usually ghost stories, not god stories? Though, if I... if that had been the case, wouldn't my power have something to do with singing? What do you mean? For example, what if my singing has healing powers? Or maybe my song can bring peace to people at war? How imaginative. We have been alive for a long time. There is nothing strange about us knowing some songs. Gods are supposed to know everything. If it weren't for your memory loss, I'm sure you would remember even more. Well, that makes sense. I guess I was never a singer. Now I feel sad. I didn't know you wanted to be a singer so much. Look, I made you some osmanthus cake. Wow. Hmm, nothing's more powerful than sweets. Enjoy the cake. Remember to do your work after you finish your snack. I'll see you later. Wait, I haven't heard you sing yet. Before you go, sing me something. Sternly. I will not. Mumbles with mouth stuff. You are my servant. You can't say no to my request. No, no, no. As your servant, my duty is to be supportive of your work. And saying no to you is one of my rights. Well then, what if I serve you some tea? I made the tea. How about I wash your feet? I just wash them myself. Well, would you like me to comb your hair? <laughs> what would you like to hear? Name it. Aww, look at his eyes. He's so cute. That is creepy. Your face looks almost twisted. Well, let me think. The moon represents my heart. I only care about you, sweet as honey. Uh, 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 sweet as honey. These are all songs of Teresa Tang. Why wouldn't you pick something more exciting, more hardcore? To be fair, you've liked her music ever since you were little. Since I was little? Oh, no, I mean, you've always liked her music. Anyway, I happen to know this one. Listen up, I'm going to sing now. As sweet as honey, your smile is as sweet as honey. Just like how the flowers bloom in the spring breeze. Your smile is so familiar to me, but I can't remember from where. Oh, it's from my dreams. What do you think? I've been curious. Why is it that the only sound we make when we talk is a single beep? Even the tone is always the same. Even when we were singing, it was nothing more than some rhythmic beeping. You are only now noticing that. Well, we are gods, after all, not humans. We have our own unique qualities. We should focus on them. Speaking of which, how's work been recently? Oh, it's been going pretty well. My only complaint is that there are so many letters. I've been pulling a lot of all-nighters to finish them. You don't have to work that hard. We are not on the same timeline as the humans. It doesn't really matter to them when we handle their letters. And the most important thing about being a god is to enjoy yourself. That's okay. I am 
I'm enjoying myself. It feels so great to be able to help people. I'm really happy. Okay then, as long as you are happy. Oh, and by the way, haven't we forgotten about something important? With my uh, mumbling with my mouth full. What important thing? Come. Ah, there are new letters here. I need to start working. I knew it. Ah, poor, poor puppy. <sighs> okay. Ooh. Okay, and oh, all right. Uh, it's just these two. So let's uh, let's start with you. Special op midnight and VR rules. Yes, it does. Okay, let's let's start with you. Okay, just just <laughs> eh, there you go. 11 p.m. Warehouse 23, Port of Busan. The warehouse was half full. There was an asphalt barrel in the middle of it that did not seem to belong there. I walked towards it to check its contents. As I had suspected, it wasn't filled with asphalt. A person had been stuffed inside. It was a very muscular man. He was barely breathing. This morning at work I had received an express delivery. There was nothing but a photo in an envelope with a time and location written on its back. The same barrel was in the center of the photo. It was the exact same port that I was looking at right now with my own eyes. Then I heard scurrying footsteps near the gate of the warehouse and the clinking sound of guns. Warehouse 23 belonged to the Musan gang. It could not have been more obvious that this was a trap set up for me by Choi Yohan. Yet I had to come. Twenty minutes later, the muscular man and I were tied together, sitting on the ground with our backs against each other. The two guards who were in charge of watching us had been waiting for their replacement, but they were so sleepy that they could barely keep their eyes open. It was pretty late after all. Anyone who had to watch two middle-aged men like us would get sleepy. I quietly cut the rope with the razor blade glued into my sleeve while the guards were dozing off. Then I grabbed the Glock 43 that I had hidden in my pant leg and covered it with my palms. After years of police work around here, I knew every single warehouse at this port like the back of my hand. All of the warehouses from number 15 to number 25 were large sized ones. They were usually filled with lots of huge cargo containers. If there were some reinforcements outside to distract them, I should be able to defend myself, even with only six bullets. They were not the only ones waiting for their prey tonight. This was all part of my plan. There was a shoddy clock on the wall of the warehouse. It made a ticking noise every time a hand moved. The hour hand was almost on twelve, and the midnight hand was ten minutes away from it. I gave the muscular man a signal in his palm behind my back and waited patiently. I handed the gun to him. Lots of noises were coming from outside of the warehouse. It sounded like a lot of people in cars. At the same moment, the minute hand also hit 12. We both stood up and ran towards the back of the warehouse. However, I didn't expect the muscular man to suddenly trip and fall over a few, only a few steps. His legs were presumably numb and stiff after being cramped up for so long. Those two guards were wide awake now. Multiple gunshots echoed inside the warehouse. They never intended to let us get out of here alive and there was certainly no reason to hold back anymore. And then I saw holes exploding all over the muscular man's body right in front of me. Fuck you all, you monsters, bastards, motherfuckers. Go to hell! I turned around and raised my gun. In the chaos, a bullet hit my thigh. Suddenly, all of the other bullets still flying in the air seemed to be moving in slow motion. They were so slow that I could even see their rotation and the vapor trails after them. I realized that he had woken up. When I woke up, I was lying in a cheap motel somewhere. I had changed into some clean clothes. There was a half-eaten sandwich and a glass of orange juice on the nightstand next to my bed. I opened my left fist. As expected, there was a note with a message that looked like it had been written by a child. These new clothes cost 50000 I survived. But Choi Yohan had got what he wanted to. Again. I 
had lost another important person in my life. Again. Kang Bakya. <clears throat> Alright, Jimmy. Hey, I just noticed that there is a cat on this letter. This is the first time that I have ever seen something like this. It's body. Oh, this must be a doodle that Jimmy sketched on the letter. If the doodle is very obvious, it might show up on the letters we receive. What is this that he drew? I think it's a cartoon cat called Sir Spotty. It was pretty famous in their world. We also have it in our dictionary. Well, I didn't know that he was a painter, too. That's impressive. Something like this barely qualifies him as a painter. Today was Sunday. Oh, look at his little doodle. So cute. I climbed out of bed a lot earlier than usual. I wanted to try my brand new VR game before Rocky woke up. There were all kinds of games available now. FPS, dancing games, even X-rated ones. The VR gear was the big thing these days, and the good ones were all so expensive. The one I got cost almost 10 grand. If I hadn't told my dad that I was buying this for research purposes, which technically wasn't entirely untrue, there was no way that he would have bought it for me. I put the gear on. It was more like a helmet, really. It was quite heavy. However, wow, it did feel quite realistic. It was as if my body had entered the virtual world. I changed my position. Hmm, huh, that felt so good. <laughs> uh, uh. I tried all of the tricks that I could. I was exhausted. I took off the gear and realized that Rocky had been up. He was wearing the smart glasses that I had bought a while ago and was looking right in my direction. My eyes widened in shock when I noticed the recording light blinking on the glasses. Rocky, wh what are you doing? The way you were playing looks so funny, so I decided to keep it for posterity. Record my ass! The automatic streaming option was on. Wait, what? Streaming? I hurried over to my computer, logged into the streaming website, and checked my channel. Oh my gosh, everything had been broadcast. There had been over 5 million viewers, and it went straight to the top of the rankings. The comments had gone berserk. Everyone was screaming, pervert, tent in the pants. Somebody even said that they would dox me. I was so screwed. Jimmy. Oh god, what have you done? Alright, let's start this up, shall we? <sighs> Changed my position. Let's try that. Just in case our legs were too stiff to run, the muscular man and I quietly shifted around a bit to loosen up our legs. Lots of noises were coming from outside of the warehouse. It sounded like a lot of people in cars. At the same moment, the minute hand also hit 12, we both stood up and ran towards the back of the warehouse. Those two guards were wide awake now. Multiple gunshots echoed inside the warehouse. I was about to go behind a cargo container when I felt a burning pain in my right leg. Damn it, I was hit. Blood was flowing down my leg, onto my shoe, and onto the ground. As if it were mocking me, I heard that voice again. The voice that couldn't have been more familiar to me. I came out from behind the container. Hiding was pointless to me. Even without a gun, those two didn't stand a chance against me. After the two guards met their gruesome deaths, I caught the muscular man in my sight. That was what had worried me the most. The muscular man was holding my Glock 43, but he was hesitating. What are you waiting for? Fire! Haven't I made it abundantly clear to you before? I was screaming in anger in the small dark room, but no one in the real world could hear me. I grabbed his head with both hands. Stop! With my strength, his neck was twisted a full 360 degrees, just like the others. His body crumpled and dropped to the ground. There was nothing that I could do but watch him fall. Every fiber of my being was filled with desperation, guilt, and regret. It was just like six years ago. 
Okay, let's retry. Perhaps they were desperate to try and stay awake. The two guards even started watching porn together on their phone. Lots of noises were coming from outside of the warehouse. It sounded like a lot of people in cars. At the same moment the minute hand hit 12, we both stood up and ran towards the back of the warehouse. However, I didn't expect the muscular man to trip and fall after only a few steps. His legs must have been so numb and stiff. Sound of us falling over alarmed the guards. They never intended to let us get out of here alive, and there was certainly no reason to hold back anymore. Multiple gunshots echoed inside the warehouse, and then I saw Holtz is blown away. So we've seen all of this. The only thing that's changed so far was that they were watching porn. After playing 10 songs, I was completely exhausted. I couldn't move my hands anymore. I took off the gear and realized that Rocky had been up. He was wearing the smart glasses that I had bought a while ago and he was looking right in my direction. My eyes widened in shock when I noticed the recording light blinking on the glasses. I hurried over to my computer, logged in into the streaming website and checked my channel. Oh gosh, everything had been broadcast. Luckily, there were only about 5,000 viewers. Most of the comments were things like, so stupid, this guy is so uncoordinated. VR games are not meant to be streamed, alright? Thank god I hadn't been playing that other game. I glanced over to my drawer, congratulating myself quietly. I suppose that was a silver lining. Okay. Uh, okay. Let's try that. Perhaps they were desperate to try and stay awake. The two guards even started watching porn together on their phone. Just in case our legs were too stiff to run, the muscular man and I quietly shifted around a bit to loosen up our legs. Lots of noises were coming from outside of the warehouse. It sounded like a lot of people in cars. At the same moment, the minute hand also hit 12. We both stood up and ran towards the back of the warehouse. By the time the two guards had noticed that we were gone, we were already taking cover behind the cargo containers. Any time now. Just a little bit longer. The guard with the gun was walking towards the back of the warehouse, and the other one was behind him. I needed to solve a little longer. We couldn't let them come any closer. The muscular man raised the gun that I had given to him. The first shot hit the shelf near the guards. The second shot hit the ground. After we ran out of bullets, we were captured. That was a mistake. I was counting on him to defend himself with the gun. I shouldn't have kept it for myself. I should have kept it for myself. Okay. Left. Right. Right. Left. Crap. I was going to throw up. I couldn't hold it anymore. I pulled off the VR gear and tossed it onto the bed. I held my hands to my chest and tried to breathe in some fresh air before I realized there was none in our room. Rocky was already awake. He was sitting over on his side, munching on his chips, which were probably his breakfast. He kept staring at me. Did you know you look like an idiot right now? I walked over and vomited into his bag of chips. Ah, oh, that's my ah oh, business. Mind your ugh, own. The bag wasn't big enough for the spicy pot dinner that I had last night. It was soon filled with my vomit. The rest of it spilled onto Rocky. Ah, oh, sick. He was in so much shock that he did not even scream. Okay, we're getting close, but it's not. Okay, so we don't want him to um. You have a gun. Play a shooting game. Perhaps they were desperate to try and stay awake. The two guards started watching porn together on their phone. Just in case our legs were stiff, too stiff to run, the muscular man and I quietly shifted around a bit to loosen up our legs. Lots of noises were coming from outside of the warehouse. It sounded like a lot of people in cars. At the same moment, the minute hand also hit 12. We both stood up and ran towards the back of the warehouse. By the time the two guards noticed, we were gone and we were already taking cover behind the cargo containers. Any time now. Just a little bit longer. The guard with the gun was walking towards the back of the warehouse and the other one was behind him. I needed to saw a little longer. I couldn't let them come any closer. I stared at their stretched shadows on the ground. 
I had the barrel of my gun peeking out from behind the containers. I then pulled the trigger and my first shot hit the right hand of the guard in front. Seeing their partner hurt and screaming in pain, the other guards stopped moving towards us out of fear. And then the garage gate slowly opened. They were here. Right on time. This game was so nauseating that I made the right decision to have my partner carry the gun. I was so wise. But the game felt super boring if you weren't actually shooting something. I took the 10 grand helmet off and threw it back into the drawer. Rocky was still snoring in his bed. He had probably stayed up last night again for a soccer game. Never mind him. I was going to head out and roam the streets now. I put on the smart glasses that I had bought a while ago and snuck out of the school. Into the real three-dimensional world. Perfect. Alright, well, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos from me, then don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.